Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we're going to go ahead and kick off with talking about two new fantasy releases, jump into the sponsorship of today's video, and then continue on to a fantasy deep dive. But get things going, let's go ahead and talk about those two new fantasy releases. For my first law fans, who might have been a bit hesitant to drop a fat stack on a hardback of a little hatred, the paperback has officially been released and is available for order. I'll have a link, of course, right down there to go ahead and check that out. A Little Hatred was one of my best reviewed books of last year. I think it's an outstanding uh, new entry into the first law world. And if you've not checked out first law, though, maybe don't start with that one. I will also have a link to the interview I had with Joe Abercrombie, the author himself, where he talks about first law writing and the fantasy genre. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Why do I continue to let Skillshare sponsor the channel here? Is it because I like touching their video assets on my green screen? <sighs> That's a good video asset right there. No, well, a little bit, maybe, probably, but mainly it's because Skillshare is an online learning community that I stand behind. For less than the cost of some streaming services a month, you have thousands of online classes available to you to pick up a new hobby or even start down a new career path. Whether it's web design, cooking, animation, which is one that I've actually been looking into after a recent Dresden video where I tried to draw for y'all, and then I got mocked on the dress and subreddit for it. But simple character animation from Mr. Davidson over here was a great place to start. So if you have been rather bored recently, like a lot of us have been, and would like to pick up a new skill, hobby, or start a new potential career path, Skillshare is an affordable way to do so. And the first 1,000 members of my community to click the link in that description down below get two months of Skillshare for free. Just right down there. Go ahead and click that if you're interested. Back to the video. For this next story, let's go ahead and do the weather report from Green Daniel over in Emmons Field. How's it going, Green Daniel? Thank you, Daniel Green. And as you can tell by my festive shirt, I'm quite enjoying Emmons Field and getting back in touch with nature. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad we've started to get along and appreciate each other's news covering abilities. Oh, yes. Me. Me. Me too. Is that a... Is that a knife? Oh, I, I, I was... Why do you... Just gonna attach my mic to it to pay, to pay homage to the to comedic to, to the comedic genius of 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 please please dear God don't don't be a bomb so that's, the, that's all it was <laughs> anyway getting into this latest Wheel of Time related story now the reason I'm doing this is more of a deep dive is I want you to understand that I'm having a good bit of skepticism going into this here because it is by no means a confirmed story. We just have what is a lot of math through various tax things and refunds going on in the Czech Republic to then stipulate what could actually be the Wheel of Time show's uh, confirmed budget for season one. And if this is true, it, it's a big one. It's got a big old budget there. So this is coming to us from watseries.com. And if I'm going to be completely transparent with you, I do not have a relationship with the people behind this website or know who runs it. Feel free to reach out to me if you're watching this video. But I'm covering this article because it actually makes a case that I find to be reasonable looking at the rebates that certain productions can get in the Czech Republic. So watseries.com reached out to a state fund of cinematography for confirmation on the reported figures. We received written confirmation that the first season has a total allocation of a very big number, which equals 14 million US dollars according to the current exchange rates. This Czech state fund was established in 2013 to attract more filmmakers. For those of you unaware, basically a lot of countries or even states locally here in the United States will give productions essentially free money to come and spend their money, which hopefully is more than they're giving back to the production at their location. It's kind of a win-win when done right, but certainly can be abused. Not that it is here, I'm just pointing that out. The incentive program offers production companies and studios a 20% cash rebate on qualifying check spending according to the Czech Film Commission's website. A simple calculation puts the cost of season one of Amazon's adaptation well north of $75 million if the filmmaker is to maximize the incentive allocation. So to receive this full allocation, they will have had to have spent $75 million on the production in the Czech Republic. Now, this does not include spending that does not directly go into the locality. So things like Roseman Pike's salary would not be included in this money. So that means their budget would be even greater than that of the 75 million stipulated here if everything we're seeing calculates out right. So the conclusion here 
is that if all of this is checking out, the season one budget for Wheel of Time is likely between 80 to 90 million dollars, meaning their spending per episode is rather close than the last season of Game of Thrones spending. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money for season one of a TV show. That being said, it's a really, really good sign. And from my own perspective, I have heard many rumblings and grumblings from the connections I do have that are not confirmed and by no means people who would know for sure that the first season of The Wheel of Time will have a huge budget. One that is rivaled by the Lord of the Rings one we've already seen announced, which is a record-breaking hundred million for a season one of a TV show. And it makes sense that Amazon's going to have two fantasy epics. They're going to invest in them equally, not to have one just completely overshadow the other. This makes sense to me and lines up with a lot of information I have seen. And I do believe that the budget probably is well within this. Good job, WattSeries.com, for at least making a decent case. But I will finally add one last time, do not take this as confirmation of Wheel of Time's budget and await for an official release. It just gives me even more hope and a little bit more excited. That's why I'm including it, and I think it's really cool. Back, back, back to you, uh, Dan Daniel Green. I, I just, you know, sleep, sleep well tonight. So in a update to this, in a rather fun bit of news, my Discord server actually started doing some math and trying to figure out just what the ballpark of the budget could be, assuming these uh, rebates we're seeing are accurate. And on the low end estimate, assuming almost all of the money spent went to the Czech Republic, it seems that we'll be getting around 10 million per episode for the first season of The Wheel of Time, easily rivaling some of the biggest shows in history. If we're being a bit more generous, it could certainly not totally unbelievably be more in the 12 to 15 million per episode range. <sighs> Excited? <laughs> Very excited for that right there. Interesting story for the Wheel of Time fans. Let's jump into the rest of the fantasy news. And Denis Villeneuve has said he has spent over a year perfecting the look of the iconic sandworms for his upcoming Dune adaptation. It has also been confirmed that Andy Serkis will be motion capturing them. That's actually not true, but isn't it amazing how that just like totally seemed believable that Andy Serkis would be mo-capping these gigantic sandworms in the desert, just flopping around like, Rah! and you know he would kill it. Yeah, that's, that's, that part's not true. But Diddy Villeneuve did say he spent over a year perfecting the look of these sandworms. 30 minutes ago, as of recording this on Tuesday, r slash fantasy has a post titled 2020 top LGBTQA plus books voting list post. And if you are a member of this community, you can go and post books you have found that are fantasy sci-fi based and recommend to others or go look for recommendations yourself. As someone who has members of this community very close to them and their family, I just like seeing like this stuff going on in the community and getting such a positive reaction because, you know, we all like to see characters who can reflect us in personal ways. And this is just a wonderful way to kind of aggregate for that specific community. Very cool. I'll of course have a link to check it out right down there. Moving on to the next news. The Umbrella Academy has had an announcement for its season two release date put on the Netflix YouTube channel, and it's so much fun. I can imagine as a fan, this would get you super hyped because you're just seeing like the cast have a good time. I'm not personally invested in this, but this was a very nice way to have an announcement trailer done with the cast at home. I like it. It's rather wholesome. It's rather appealing. And uh, yeah, it'll be uh, linked right down below. And if you don't want to watch it, you just want to know the release date for season two of the Umbrella Academy it is going to be July 31st of this year. Yeah, that is right around the corner. Good God, that is that is happening ASAP. And it looks like we are having Edgar Wright, Nira Park, Joe Cornish, and Rachel Pryor coming together to launch a London and LA-based film company, starting off with three fantasy sci-fi adaptations right off the bat. All ones I know fans are looking forward to see. This includes Lockwood and Company, The City of Brass, and The Murders of Molly Southbourne. I'm really happy to see SFF projects in the hands of Edgar Wright. He's one of my current favorite filmmakers out there, and yeah, I'm down. I bet a lot of the City of Brass fans are going off in the comments right now. The man, the myth, the legend, Taka Watiti is going to be leading a read-along of James and the Giant Peach with a 
whole lot of super, super famous celebrities online. In fact, two episodes have already been released. Go ahead and check it out if you'd like to. But the main reason I'm actually covering this is to ask you, the viewer, do you like when I covered these like celebrities doing stuff to entertain people's stories or you'd rather I cut them? I know there's big ones like the Andy Serkis one where it's like, it's Andy Serkis reading The Hobbit. I should cover that. <laughs> but for these like other ones, do you want to know about them or no? You hear about them enough other places and you want fantasy news to not focus on stuff like that. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to sift through and gauge, you know, which opinion is more popular and go from there. Now in true entertainment Star Wars news, because Ahsoka has been confirmed to be in season two of The Mandalorian, a lot of websites are now saying she's rumored to be an Obi-Wan. She's confirmed to be in the Obi-Wan season one live action. Maybe she's getting her own show. She's definitely getting her own show. What I'm just gonna say is I, I looked through a lot of the sources and pretty much none of this stuff is coming from a direct confirmation that any of this is happening. It's a whole lot of like person on the inside who wants to remain nameless. Sometimes these pan out to be true. Other times, a lot of the times, most of the time not. So, you know, just let it breathe. Maybe I would think it's likely they might give this character her own live action show because trust me, they're aware she's extremely popular from the Clone Wars show and they'll probably use season two of Mandalorian as a test before they go ahead and confirm anything. I would think they wouldn't confirm one way or the other until they see the reaction to her character in season two of the Mandalorian. Or they'll just go ahead and confirm it, right? And then if the reaction is bad, they'll just sweep it under the rug in Star Wars fashion. Like, you know how Ryan Johnson was supposed to get his own trilogy of Star Wars movies and they've never officially canceled it? It's just, it's just not talked about anymore. We just don't talk about this now. And in a final insert for this new cycle of the day, sorry about these, Timothy Olfant has officially been cast in the season two of Mandalorian, as well as everyone else we've been talking about. Wow, this is really racking up to be an insane cast for season two. And it's being rumored that he will be donning the Boba Fett armor. Now I know what you're thinking. How in the world could he be doing that when we know the Jango Fett actor is returning to play Boba Fett? Because it's a clone and that makes sense. Well, uh, plot lines, maybe he has the armor because people have scavenged it, scavenged it, now you gotta get the armor back. I don't know, storylines. But there's reasons and rumored that he's wearing it. This is all we know now. Next news. Now to my supernatural fans out there, it has finally been confirmed that the final episodes of this show will be released this fall. Well, CW is having a major series of delays for shows coming down the road due to, of course, what is happening in the world. Supernatural is getting its series finale put out this fall. That is wonderful. I'm very happy for the fans out there. I personally cannot get into this show for the life of me. It's not because of like some snobbery around the Dresden Files. I see people peddle that where like Supernatural is a ripoff. The similarities are too broad stroke. It's a concept that could easily be just come up with on their own. But yes, this is happening without a doubt. This fall, you're getting your finale. I'm always just happy for fan bases whenever this occurs. Good on you. And I might just tune in for the final seven. Why not, right? Like I saw the first couple seasons, I think. The, it was just like one season. I don't know. I saw at least the opening. Why not jump in at the end and then claim I'm a diehard fan and everyone else who didn't watch it just like I did is not a real fan. And this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace! And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon. And I have to say it like this because I love it Dunder Dan! I hope you're having a good one, Dunder Dan. And I hope the rest of everybody is having a fantastic day. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!